In this third special feature for palette effects, we're going to be talking about crafting your vision. So the first special feature, if you missed it, we talked about all the different color tools that you have at your disposal to use as you edit your images. Then we talked in the second special feature, we talked about the most natural saturation and contrast adjustment you can possibly get in all your photographs. And now what we're going to talk about is more crafting and uh, harnessing and honing and fine tuning your artistic vision. Okay. And really the whole idea behind palette effects is just that it's, it's this finishing touch ability, the ability to come in with a technically perfect tone and color image that looks pretty good to start, but could just use that little bit of refinement, that artistic expression and how you take it to that next level. It's a systematic approach to that. What I'm going to show you here is just the idea of building that vision, the idea of, okay, we've got ourselves a pretty decent photograph that looks like it's technically just right. It's perfect, especially if you're doing photojournalism type photography, great photojournalist photo, but how do we make it artistic? How do we make the viewer feel something when they look at that image? And that's what we're going to discuss in this. And we're going to actually craft an artistically expressed image. So if you want to follow along with me, there's a PDF here that I've included with this that has a download link to this image that you can get off of pexels.com. Pexels does offer Creative Commons zero licenses on images, so you are free to download this image. I don't want to provide it for you. I would rather you go see who created this photograph from pexels.com so you can get it there. Even though you can distribute under Creative Commons Zero, I do not want to distribute this image. I would rather you go and pick it up. What are we going to do first? Well, I'm looking at this photograph and I'm thinking to myself, okay, I think the photographer that took this post processed it really well. They had a really good uh, shot, essentially, I think. You know, even though, you know, there's no breathing room above the head or anything, it's, it's so compositionally right. I like it. And it's even got that wide screen type format to it, almost like it'd be perfect for a video. But we need to take it to that next level. We need to make it feel like backdraft, you know, the movie where everything's hot, really hot. Because right now, I don't feel like this is hot. I feel like it's just a guy dressed up with a background and he looks kind of like me almost. <laughs> anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to add a series of layers to this to help structure and show and craft and fine tune our artistic vision for this photograph. And there's a series of adjustment layers that can do that for you very simply and very easily. You just have to know what to do. So let's go ahead and start. Let's go ahead and add a new adjustment layer. And that new adjustment layer is going to be a solid color fill. With that solid color, I'm just going to press OK at this point, because what I need to do with the solid color fill actually is set it to the blend mode of color. And what color does is the color blend mode allows the luminance values underneath to show through the color. So notice at normal, we can't see anything. It's opaque, right? But if we change this to color, we can see the tonal values and the luminance values underneath this image. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the eyeball off here. I'm going to turn the preview off. And the reason why is I'm going to do a trick where I can select any color I want in this image. So because this image has a nice warmth to it, I want to select a yellow from up here. So I'm going to double click inside this color fill and it's going to have an eyedropper here set for the color picker. And I'm just going to select this color yellow and press OK. So now when I turn that color fill back on, we have this whole image that's covered in the color yellow. Now I need to come down here and just drop this opacity to something like, I don't know, something between 25 and 30%. So we get that yellow color over our image. If you want to choose any other color, go right ahead. All you have to do at this point is double click inside here and click anywhere on your image to get the color that you want. If you want a more red, robust red image, go ahead and use that color. I'm going to use a yellow color for this demonstration because I'm going to build up with other warm colors on top of that press OK. So now I'm going to get a selective color layer. And in the past, I've shown you how to create cinematic matte effects using the curves adjustment layer. But here, what did I show you? In the first special feature, I showed you how to use the selective color. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, we're going to grab selective color. And up here, it might be set to reds by default, come down here and set this to blacks. Because now we're going to affect all of our dark colors. So what I want to do is lift those black colors a little bit. I don't want them to be quite as black. So I'm just going to drop the percentage a little bit and I'm only going to go like negative four, negative 5% just to lift those colors a little bit. So there's not so much contrast in there because now I'm going to start filling that in with some color because I want those color, the black to have some color in them. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit of yellow to this, maybe drop this down and take some of the cyan out to add some red to it. That looks about good right there. And with the magenta, we can either add some green or add some magenta here. That looks good. 
And what I can do at this point is, right now this should really only be affecting my darks. But if I still see some of my midtones and my, my whites coming through, I can double click on this layer and I can use blend if, and I could say, okay, I don't want you to affect any of my lights. I'll move this down until I start to see some of those light areas not being affected by this, uh, this selective color. And I'll press Alt or Option and feather that back out. Nice little feather there. So now that selective color is only affecting our black areas. That whole blend if trick, 100% optional. If you want to do it, you don't necessarily have to. I just like to ensure that it's only affecting my dark areas into my midtones, so I protect those highlight areas from being affected. So now what we're going to do is kind of make this look like there's a big like flare in the background. So I'm going to go into a new adjustment layer and that adjustment layer is going to be a gradient. I'm going to change that gradient here because right now it's set to blue and it's linear. Let's change this to radial and look, I can drag this radial gradient anywhere I want to. Well, I want to put it right here and I definitely don't want it to be blue. Okay. So now after I've got the radial gradient all set up, I want to make this look like a fiery type of burst so that, that background area gets a nice radial kind of fill to it. So I'm going to change this radial fill here. Just all you have to do is click on that area right there and it'll open up your gradient editor. And we're just going to click this color right here and change this to a orange color, bright orange color, just like that. Press okay, press okay. And now I might need to take the scale of this. If I want this to be bigger, just take the scale, bring that up to whatever size you want. So big flare back there and press okay. Now we don't want to leave that flare like it is. Okay. We definitely want to subdue it a little bit so we can go through our blend modes. And one of the blend modes that I really like for this, for adding that flare is called soft light because what soft light does is it will apply that, uh, that flare to the background and it'll let the, the lights and the darks get some orange to them, but not allow them to get pure orange. It just allows them to get a deeper and more enriched version of orange. If it's on black and a lighter, brighter version of orange, if it's on white, notice the difference before and after. So now on top of this, I want to even out all of my colors. And to do that, I'm going to do this trick where I use a gradient map. So I'm going to click on my adjustment layers and go to gradient map. And I want to even out this whole image. So I want to add some oranges and some yellows to it so that all the colors get a nice, even color tone to them. So I'm going to change this to color and my gradient. I don't want it to be a blue gradient. I don't want it to be blue to purple like that. So I'm going to click on this gradient to go into the gradient editor. And you'll see in here, I've got several gradients that are already all set up. I like this one right here because it's got this like reddish brown sepia into a nice yellow color. That's going to be perfect. If you're wondering what those numbers are, it's going to be this color red, which is 830303. And this gradient is going to be FFFE8E. Now, one of the things that I'm including in palette effects is not just the extension, but all of my gradients. So all the gradients that you see that I have here, you'll get with palette effects. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK on this. So now we've got a really good looking red type of image, but all my other stuff underneath is now all that work I did is kind of lost. I mean, it definitely has an effect on the image underneath, but I want to drop the opacity of this down to uh, something lower. Let's just bring this down and see what this will look like at about, let's say 35, 36%, somewhere around there, almost like 33%, you yeah, know, somewhere around there. So I, I really like the way this image looks so far. And at this point, crafting and honing that artistic vision, I could almost say that I'm pretty much done. Uh, I like the, the amount of red that's coming through here. I like the oranges. I like the yellows. I like how everything feels like it's hot right now. But this would be the mood that I'm trying to convey it would be more of a mood of like, this guy is about to fight a fire. He's pulling out the hose, right? Well, you can change that mood and make the viewer feel something completely different if you change up all your colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and in my history palette, I'm going to go ahead and press this button right here. What that's going to do is it's going to duplicate all of my work so that my image right here is still good. Everything's good there. And now I've got this image right here that I can do all my work on. So if I wanted to make this feel like maybe this guy just got done fighting a fire, how would I do that? Well, here it's hot. The fire is existent, right? Well, if I double click on this gradient map, I can click on this gradient and I can change this gradient to something blue, right? Now I could change this gradient fill that's orange. I could change that to something that is blue. Okay. Okay. 
okay? And this selective color, I can just reverse everything. I can make the yellows more blue. I can take out that magenta, make it more green, and I can add some cyan. And then this color fill, I can change that from yellow up to blue. And now it looks like, hey man, I just got done fighting this fire. Look, I'm all done, everything's good. This one's, oh boy, we got ourselves a fire. Everyone, uh, I don't care what you're doing, drop what you're doing, let's go, we gotta fight this fire. And this one's, man, that was a tough fire. We just got it done. I have a lot of respect for firefighters. I definitely do. Firefighters and first responders, both my uh, brother-in-law and my father-in-law are firefighters and first responders and mad respect for them. So if I really wanted to further kind of make this feel like a dramatic scene from a movie though, so we've got the artistic effect going, but I, there's something else that's just missing. If I duplicate this background layer by pressing Command or Control J, that will make a direct copy of what's underneath my image. It won't make a copy of all this stuff. It just makes a copy of that background layer. So if I go up to Filter and I go to Blur and I go to Motion Blur, I can go ahead and blur the junk out of this image to give it like this eerie kind of feel. I'm going to take it really high. I'm going to take it up to like 400 something. Yeah, that'll work really high. Let's just go 415 to make it even and press OK. And now I'm going to change this blending mode because obviously we can't see anything now. But if I change this blending mode, it will allow the underlying layer to show through. So let's try overlay. Eh, that doesn't look too bad. Let's try soft light. That doesn't look too bad. Hard light. Ah, you know what? I really like the way hard light looks. It kind of gives me that feel. You know that feel of when you look down a road when you're driving on like a 100 degree day and the whole road seems to look like it's warped and, and, and road just moving? <laughs> yeah, that's what this kind of feels like now. But I wouldn't want that to be on his face because I like his facial expression there. So I'm going to make a new uh, mask on here. Press B for my brush tool. Make sure it's set to black. And I'm just going to boom, just hit right there along the face, maybe a little bit on any areas of highlight that I want to maybe make shine through that hard light a little bit more, hit those areas of highlight, the face, and then those areas of highlight will look really good, really, really good. Maybe even this area right up here. So that's not really affected there. Maybe even these areas of yellow. Uh, yep, cool. So now here is our overall before, and here is our after. We've crafted our artistic vision with some very simple tools. And the good news is here is that if you're thinking, I, there's no way I'm ever gonna remember all that stuff. Well, that's what palette effects is designed for. If we open up palette effects, you can see here that we have some solid color fill layers. These solid color fills will give you an idea. It's just like a palette, like a painter with a palette. You have quick access to push button colors to give your image that color graded feel. We also have some gradients underneath here. And we even have a reduction in our black areas with reduction warm and reduction cold. All of the things that we've just done on this image, you can do right with palette effects. And we're not quite ready to jump into this yet. I have one more video that's gonna introduce you to palette effects and then it's gonna be ready to go. I can't wait to share it with you. So uh, just hang tight with me, okay? Mm -hmm.